In this video, we shall discuss uh, what is income from other sources, what are the incomes that are chargeable under this head. For example, uh, how to bring dividend to tax, uh, family pension, casual income, interest on securities, what is subletting income. Likewise, we will see all the incomes which will be charged under the head income from other sources. Watch the video till the end and I have uploaded the second video uh, which uh, where I have explained a few solved problems. The link I am giving it in the description box. Now let's move on to this video. Under income tax, there are five heads of income. Income from salaries, house property, business or profession, capital gains and other sources. Whatever income an assessee earns, that income should be brought to tax under any one of the five heads of income. If the assessee earns an income under an employer-employee relationship, it will go to the head salaries. If he receives rent from a building, then it will go to the head house property. If he does a business or carry out a profession and earns an income, that will go to the head business or profession. If he sells any long-term assets or short-term assets and in that transaction, if he incurs a gain or loss, it will go to the head capital gains. So apart from these four definitions, whatever income Whatever other income the assessee earns will go to the head other sources. So that is why we call it as the residuary head of income. An income which does not find place under the first four heads of income will be brought to tax under this head that is under the head income from other sources. Now let us see some incomes which will be chargeable under this head. The first income that I have taken here is dividend. I hope you all know what is the meaning of dividend. Dividend is an income that is earned by a shareholder of a company. This dividend income is taxable income under the head other sources from the assessment year 21-22 onwards. Why I have given this assessment year 21-22 onwards is before this assessment year dividend from Indian company was exempted and dividend from foreign company was taxable. But now from this assessment year onwards, that is from 21-22 onwards, both dividend from Indian company and dividend from foreign company is taxable. Okay, next is uh, de regarding deductions. What amount can we deduct from this income? We can deduct only interest paid if the assessee has taken a loan to purchase the shares of the company and on that loan amount if he has paid any interest, that interest can be claimed as a deduction. But again, there is one condition to this. The interest amount cannot exceed 20% of the dividend income. This I will explain with an example. Say in the question, dividend is given. The dividend is given and the amount of dividend is 10,000 rupees. Say interest amount, uh, it is given as interest paid. Is rupees uh, 1,000. Now, what is the condition? This interest amount cannot exceed 20% of dividend income. So, dividend income is 10,000. On this 10,000, you calculate 20%. The answer that you get will be 2,000 rupees. So, this interest paid cannot exceed 2,000. Is that clear? So, in this uh, problem, we are getting only 1,000 rupees, but we can claim up to 2,000 rupees. So, this 1000 rupees can be written in the inner column. You can deduct it and bring 9000 to the outer column. That 9000 is taxable dividend. So, I will explain again. Whatever interest dividend amount is given, you write it in the inner column. Interest paid. Interest paid is 1000 rupees. Then you calculate 20% of dividend income. That is, on this income, you calculate 20%, you will get one answer. This interest amount cannot exceed this 20% of dividend income. In this case, it is 1000. 1000 is less than 2000 rupees. So, I am deducting 1000 rupees and bringing 9000. This is the taxable dividend. We are bringing it to the outer column. Okay, now moving on to the next income that is casual income. Casual income is an income which is uh, which uh, the income which is earned without expectation, without stipulation. You may or you may not earn that income. The income is uncertain and it is not recurring. The 
the earning of that income is uncertain and that income will not be recurring examples of cash flow income are lottery winnings card games puzzles gambling betting tv shows all these are examples of cash flow income this income is a taxable income though this is a taxable income expenses cannot be claimed as a deduction for all the other incomes if the income is taxable expenses can be claimed but for cash flow income alone even though the income is taxable expenses cannot be claimed okay but again there is one exception there is one exception to this rule what is that exception if the assessee earns an income from owning and maintaining race horses see winnings from race horses different if it is winnings from race horses then the in the expenses cannot be claimed but if the assessee is owning he himself owns the race horses he maintains them he feeds them trains them and then he makes the horses to participate in the race and then he wins the prize money so owning and maintaining race horses is different from winnings from race horses for winnings from race horses expenses cannot be claimed but for owning and maintaining race horses expenses incurred to maintain horses can be claimed as a deduction okay then the next point that you should be very clear under cash flow income is grossing up so grossing up you will have to answer two questions that is when to gross up and how to gross up when and how so when will you gross up only when the words net or received is given in the question then if the word net or received for example simply lottery winnings is given no need to gross it up on the other hand if it is not lo lottery winnings received is given you have to gross it up so now we understood when to gross up then how to gross up 100 divided by 70 whatever amount that you have received that amount into 100 divided by 70 is the formula for grossing up for example lottery winnings it is given as 1 lakh rupees lottery winnings received 1 lakh rupees received is there so you have to gross it up how will you gross it up this amount into 100 divided by 70 whatever answer that you get you will write it in the amount column so i hope you understood what how to calculate dividend income and how to work out cash flow income the next income that i have taken is letting on hire pl machinery plant or furniture so here if we are letting anything on hire the income that we get is rent okay but this rental income will not go to the head house property why because this uh, rental income is not received from any building if you let out a building on on that building if you get a rental income it will go to the head house property but here we are letting assets machinery plant or furniture so this rental income will not go to the head house property okay then if this rental income is not charged under the head business or profession then it will come to the head other sources that is if the usual business of the assessee is letting out machinery plant furniture etc then that income will go to the head business or profession if it is not his usual business then it will come to the head other sources okay in the other sources it is taxable income and expenses whatever expense he has incurred to earn that income can be claimed as a deduction the next income is family pension family pension is different from pension that we are charging under the head salaries you all know that pension will be charged under the head salaries so pension is an amount which is received by an employee after his retirement after the retirement of the employee the employer gives him pension but family pension is after the death of the employee the employee has died and his family members are receiving pension from the employer so in this case there is no employer employee relationship between the family member and the employer so this will be charged under the head other sources so family pension is pension received by family members of a deceased employee this is a taxable income under the head other sources 
and you can claim a standard deduction of 33 1 by 3 percentage of such pension or 15,000 whichever is less. Okay, then the next important income is interest on securities. So, for the purpose of income tax, we are classifying securities into two broad categories, government securities and commercial security. This government security can be classified again into two categories. One is tax free, the other is less tax. And again, commercial security also we are categorizing into two categories, tax free and less tax. Okay, this tax free government security is exempted. Exempted means you will not bring it to tax at all. If it is a less tax government security, it is a taxable income and you need not gross up. There is no need to gross up less tax government security. If it is a tax free commercial security, that is a taxable income and you must gross up. You have to gross up. Less tax commercial security is also a taxable income and you will gross up only when net or received is given in the question. I hope you understood this. We are classifying interest into two categories, government and commercial. Again, we are classifying it into tax free, less tax, tax free commercial, less tax commercial. Okay, only tax free government security is exempted. Tax free government security alone is exempted. All the other categories are taxable. And grossing up, when to gross up? Less tax government security need not be grossed up. You need not gross up less tax government security. Tax free government security must be grossed up. Less tax government security will be grossed up only when net or received is given. Okay, now we understood when to gross up. Now moving on to how to gross up. If you receive the interest after or we can say May 13th May is the base date. If you receive interest before 13th May, then the formula for grossing up is 100 divided by 90. If you receive interest after May 13th, the formula is 100 divided by 92.5. Previously under casual income, the formula for grossing up is 100 divided by 70. But for interest on securities, May 13th, you compare the date on which the interest is received. If the interest is received before May 13, it is 100 divided by 90. If the interest is received after May 13, the formula is 100 divided by 92.5. So that is what I have given here. So all these things has been explained here and grossing up formula. If the interest is received before May 13, interest is received after May 13. And the other point what I have given here is if you are receiving interest from a savings bonds, if you are receiving interest from savings bond, you will gross up only when the amount exceeds 10,000 rupees. If the amount is less than 10,000 rupees, you need not gross up. Okay, so I hope you understood how to the provisions for family pension and interest on securities. Some other incomes which are chargeable under this head are Rent from subletting. Subletting means uh, the assessee is not the owner of the building. He has taken a house for rent and he is dividing the house and letting out a portion as rent. This is subletting. So here the assessee is not the owner. So this rental income cannot go to the head house property. It will come to the head other sources. This is taxable income. Expenses can be claimed. For all these incomes, all the incomes that I have listed here, all these incomes are taxable and expenses can be deducted. You can deduct the expenses. Okay, then royalty income, director's fees, ground rent. Here again the word rent is there, but we will not take it to the head house property because there is no building. Ground means vacant land. For a vacant plot, we are receiving rent. So this will come to the head other sources. Then agricultural income, interest on bank deposit, salary of MLA MP. This is again a repeated thing which will be asked in the question. What you have to remember is salary of MLA and MP is taxable and allowances and allowances is exempted. 
if salary is given it is taxable allowances is given it is exempted then income from undisclosed source income from leasehold property remuneration received for doing examination work so all these incomes are taxable income expenses can be deducted so i hope you understood the provisions for calculating income from other sources i have uploaded another video which explains a few solved problems under the head income from other sources do watch that video the link i have given it in the description box thank you for watching